Today is the fourth Sunday of the Blessed Month of Patience, and as you have listened to the Gospel, the Gospel is speaking about uh, the temptation of the Lord. Uh, the devil is trying to tempt him in uh, the wilderness, as it says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Sorry, there was a technical problem. Why this gospel is in the church, the church is putting this gospel in today's reading? Because after the Holy Spirit descend, who will start tempting us? What, when, when the Lord was, <clears throat> when, when he was baptized and he received the Holy Spirit, what happened after this? The temptation started, the devil started attacking and tempting. And after we received the Holy Spirit in our, uh, in, our uh, uh, in the, the feast of the Pentecost, the devil will be starting to tempt us as well. And there is always a spiritual warfare. And there is always a spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a fact that we are living in and we are seeing uh, every day, in every, uh, uh, at least in every way or shape or form on a daily basis. Look to what the gospel is said. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Though we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And the, and the scripture also mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So many times we are not aware that there is a spiritual warfare, fihak or hay that is ongoing in our life, and the devil is out there trying to tempt us, put us in, uh, uh, in uh, tough situations where uh, we will be disconnected from God or we will be losing <coughs> hope or losing faith or uh, not go to church and the attacks will go on and on and on. Maybe some of you have, uh, have heard this. I, I was speaking about this topic as well yesterday, but we are having, it's a huge topic. We can have a, uh, actually the Pope, Pope Shinoda wrote two, two books about spiritual warfare. In, uh, in the 40 days, <coughs> in the 40 days when I was in the monastery, uh, there was uh, a priest who saw a youth, an atheist, uh, believing in communism, very intelligent, uh, working in the education field from Australia. He started his, his journey to know about God. And he believed he became Christian, then he became a monk and he joined the Coptic Church. And you can uh, look him up, Father Lazarus, Father Lazarus St. Anthony. You can search Father Lazarus St. Anthony, a very, very unique, very, very unique story of a very unique uh, uh, Coptic monk <coughs> who joined the church and he has been joining the church for a very long time. He's living in the wilderness, in the, in the monastery of St. Anthony, in the Red Sea. Um, there is a huge uh, mountain, and he is living in a cave in the mountain, and he's praying every day. And uh, nearby the cave, or in, inside the cave where St. Anthony himself was, was living. Uh, if you have a chance of going to Egypt, uh, it is a must-see. Uh, monastery and is a must see person as well. Sometimes he is locked up and he doesn't meet people. But it happened that I was lucky to see a, that priest in the monastery that I was <coughs> spending the 40 days in uh, after being ordained. Because after the priest is being ordained, he goes to the monastery for 40 days to receive the, 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 the sacraments and to receive the, the, the liturgical prayer. Uh, all the, the details of it. So I was uh, walking and I, I saw uh, 
a monk who is uh, in caste and his, uh, his foot is, uh, is on the <coughs> on a chair and they want to check on him and they told him how the woman this is uh, he didn't reply in Arabic so I spoke with him in English and he told me yeah I'm uh, Abuna Lazarus and I'm serving the Quran in that monastery so I told him what happened to you he told me uh, I fell and uh, that my, my foot uh, got uh, really injured and it was my mistake. <coughs> so I told him, what did you mean by your mistake? <coughs> so he told me, I prayed a wrong prayer. So I told him, what do you mean by a wrong prayer? He told me, let me tell you the story. It was the, as far as I recall, as he, he told me, it was the eve of the feast of Saint Mary. And we have a small picture of Saint Mary in, uh, in, in his cell, and he prayed and he said, God, protect me from uh, the devil like 10 years. And through the prayer of Saint Mary, I, I want you to protect me and uh, to support, support me for uh, the, the next coming 10 years. And he told me uh, one day he, he was uh, leaving his cave. He was going to pray in the, in the church. Well, I'm not speaking about a, a regular road. He is he's going up the mountain in a very, very risky uh, place. And he saw a huge uh, shadow of a bear. He got really scared. He lost his balance. He fell. And uh, if you look up on the on, on YouTube, Father Lazarus Saint Anthony, you will find that he is saying this story, and he is they are uh, even replicating the location where he fell from. And uh, just, to, but I didn't listen to the story from the video. I learned the story from him personally. So when he was falling, he said, "Ma," I speak about Mama Saint Mary. He's saying, "Ma." And he held, when he was falling, he, he, he told me, I, I felt that there is someone who is holding me, like uh, hugging me very, very strongly, and didn't let me go till I reached the ground. But while this was happening, he, <coughs> his, his foot was broken. And when he they, they miraculously knew about his injury, they got a car, they traveled all the way to Cairo, he, he had surgery, and after he was in the surgery, he was in, the, uh, in his room, he kept remembering the timing. And he said, oh, wow, this happened exactly in the eve of St. Mary, after how many years? Exactly 10 years, with the exact day. And he told me, I have prayed the wrong prayers. Because, and I smiled, I told him, you should have asked for all your life. Spiritual warfare is existing. You are facing it every day, whether you like it, you don't like it. And um, I asked one time <coughs> one of the abunas who was highly involved in, uh, in marital issues, highly, highly involved for years and years and years, and I asked him, uh, what do you think of what is going on? And he told me, uh, he told me two things. Actually, two abunas and each one has said almost the same thing. The first abuna said, 90% of the, the, the problems in marriages is a spiritual problem. 90% is a spiritual problem. And the other priest said, many times they are thinking, the spouses are thinking that he is the enemy or she is the enemy, while they are not aware that the enemy is outside attacking both of them, attacking the unity of the family, which is the devil. And it is a spiritual problem, and it is the devil who is trying to break, but why the devil is having a war against the family as a unit? And why this is important? Now, if it is not important, he's not going to fight it. Why? Uh, I'm serious about the question, why? What happens when you break the family?
you, you, when you bring the family, you bring the unit that is holding the whole society, that is holding the whole church, that is holding everything. If, if you bring the family, then you are breaking the individuals, and when you are, the individuals are broken and divided, you can attack them here. You can attack them what? Separately. And by this, this is one of the tactics of the devil to attack, uh, have a, a huge and strong attacks on the family. Another factor that is, so my, my point to you is, spiritual warfare exists, spiritual warfare is happening, spiritual warfare is, we are experiencing every single day to the extent that the Lord himself is telling us to pray in the Lord's prayer every day, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So when we pray this prayer, I beg you, pause a little because we will pray our Father out in heaven very quickly. Pray it slowly and mean it from all your heart. Lead us not into temptation this day and deliver us from the evil one. Deliver my spouse, deliver my kids, deliver my, my friends, deliver, deliver us from the evil one because we cannot conquer on our own. So St. Paul is saying we do not wrestle against flesh or blood, or against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. It is a spiritual warfare. It is not just uh, something that is happening or, uh, yeah, it is, yeah, things is happening for a reason. No, it is a spiritual warfare, but why? Why the spiritual warfare is going really strong, even again is the definition of the family, because the, the whole uh, uh, things about uh, same gender marriage and why all this war? Because when you hit the definition of the family, you hit the unity of the family, and when you hit the unity of the family, then, then this is part of the attacks. Even in the book of uh, Jude, and yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses because the, the devil wanted to reveal the body of Moses to archangel Mike, uh, to, to the people, so as people will start worshiping Moses, not God, but God was hiding the, the, the body of Moses so as this will not happen, and archangel Michael, as it says in, the, in Jude, so there is a war. The war is listed, the war is mentioned, the war even is in the very famous uh, verse, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The teaching of the fathers and even in iconography, the spiritual warfare is happening. This is one of the, my favorite uh, icons that you will, that I really love. We can have a retreat about this. But if you, so is it clear? The picture is clear? So what is happening in this picture? There is a ladder that goes from, from, uh, from the ground all the way to heaven. Who is in the end of the ladder? Christ. Who are those who are walking up on the ladder? Those are monks. This is this is the this is a, an icon, a very old icon that even some some of the books or one of the books is taking this as a cover icon for the books, the letters to heaven, and what is happening? Who are hanging in the air? The devils are pulling who? Are pulling monks? Are pulling monks from? their path and you will find that there is there is one that is scary that has two monks behind each other so this is a symbol also for a wrong teaching my point is spiritual warfare exists it is happening every single day am i telling this, this to you to be scared no because the lord the, the, the scripture is telling us what he who is in you is more greater than he who is in the world. He who alazifikum azam and alazifu alam. So who, he who is in you, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, is greater than he who is in the world. But 
if I am not aware that there is a lot of temptation, a lot of spiritual challenges, then I might be reluctant, I might be lazy, maybe I might not be focusing on those things that might uh, attack us. The stories of the saints also will give us another proof of the, the existence of the spiritual warfare. And this is one of the very famous stories, St. Marina story. St. Marina, she had the devil appear to her and she made the sign of the cross and she held the devil with his, from his horn and she told him, you are not leaving here unless you tell me what you do and how you tempt the people. Unheard of in the history of the church. And I'm copying the Senexarian, the exact Senexarian, the verbatim of, of the story. Then the devil appeared to her and said, O Marina, if you obey the government, that would be for your good, for he is merciless. The same story of pushing her to worship idols, and uh, the saints refused, and he wishes to erase your name from the face of earth. She realized that he was the devil, and straight away she caught the hair of his head, and she took the iron rod and st started beating him, saying, Stop it, O Satan. And it tells you how powerful was San Marina. And then she bound him with the sign of the cross, not to depart before from him before <clears throat> until he told her all about what he does to the human race. And look, now the first time the devil is the devil is confessing. But this is confession without repentance. And she pressed him and he told her, I am the one who makes adultery, stealing, blaspheming, and earthly desire good and desirable, uh, good and desirable to humans. I am the one who makes adultery, immorality, stealing, blaspheming, be, blaspheming against God or God even or claiming that God even does not exist, earthly desires good and desirable to, to the humans. Did he say, I will make it, I will make the people fall in it? He didn't. He will make it desirable, he make it acceptable. And the beginning to desire something is to accept it. And one of the, the shocking things that is happening now that you can see, for example, celebrities doing something completely, completely against the commandment of God from every single aspect. And the youth are saying, oh, this is normal. Uh, this is okay. This is exactly what the devil is doing. No, no, this is not normal. This is not okay. This is breaking the commandments of God. But the trick is, I am the one he is saying, I am the one, <clears throat> I am the one who makes adultery, stealing, blaspheming, blaspheming, earthly desires, good and desirable to the humans, which means that at least start with accepting it at least starting with accepting it. And when we accept, when we accept, oh, it's a different lifestyle, it's a, it's a preference, it's, a, it's their own choice, it is how they live, then he is on his plan. And if I do not overcome, and if the devil is still confessing, and if I do not overcome him, the human being, I steer up what? Can you read this? I steer up what? Sleep and ill and laziness. I steer up sleep and laziness against him so he will not pray and ask for the forgiveness of his sins. St steer sleep and laziness so as not to pray. And I will tell you a confession. One day, it was, uh, it was very late at night. I was in the church for a long day. <clears throat> And I said, you know what, uh, I'm very tired. I prayed all day long in the church and my, my, my back is hurting, my knee is not even uh, stand. And I prayed already in the church, so I, I will just go and sleep. I dim the light <clears throat> and I'm moving to sleep. I got a text from a friend overseas. There is a match, soccer match, uh, of my, uh, one of my favorite teams happening in a completely different side of the whole world, uh, just with the different time, time zones. So, and it is late right now, and he is sending me the live stream link. A few moments I was tired dead, 
And now, I just I turned on the lights, I clicked the link, and they joined the match, and they uh, I watched. Uh, I think the course for how long? And I realized, oops, what was going on? <laughs> for just a few seconds, I was saying, I'm tired, I'm dead, my knees are hurting, maybe my back is is very heavy, and I cannot even carry myself to pray. And just on the spot, everything. So I steer sleep and laziness against him, so he will not pray. The devil is attacking our prayers big time. Every time, every time we are starting to pray, you will find the distraction, you will find uh, something to happen, you will find that you remember the uh, sure that you have to take, you remember a due date for uh, an exam that, uh, or a paper that uh, you missed. You Tons of distractions so as not to pray. Because if, when we pray, we are standing in front of God and we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. And definitely, the same setting happens with the liturgy on every single Sunday, on every single day. For the sake of the time, <coughs> what shall we do? Uh, I, will, I will only say one, one singing and one Bible verse. <coughs> we do not fight for victory, but we fight from victory. We are not fighting for victory. We are not fighting to have victory in our life. We are fighting from victory because be of good cheer, I have overcame the world. The Lord mentioned, be of good cheer, I have overcame the world, I have overcome the world. So we are not, we do not fight for victory, but we fight from victory because <coughs> the victory already happened and Christ did it on the cross a long time back. So, <clears throat> in the book of uh, Revelation, I'm sorry for the sake of the time, in the book of Revelation 12, 11, Revelation 12, 11, this is the three steps that the people who overcame in heaven, and when they asked, how they overcame, how they conquered, how they became victorious. And they overcame him, the devil, by three things. Can, can we read this out loud? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the liturgical prayer, by the word of their testimony, the scripture, and last thing, they did not love their lives to the death. They didn't love their life more <clears throat> than they loved God. And this was the key for their strength. May God give me and give each one of us that we will abide in him through the, the, the liturgical prayer, that we will fight through reading the scripture and that we love him more than even our life is the glory forever and ever. Amen.